Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S, that is, at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. I really appreciate you being here. We are going to have a great show for you today. Look, we're starting with, first of all, I want to tell you folks something. Um, for those of you, some of you are that, that listen to the show every single day, they hear me complain, complain, complain about the Democratic Party, and they hear me complain about the DCC, and they hear me complain about progressives not being able to run, uh, run as they should. So folks, I'm asking you, those of you that are regular listeners, stick with us because we still need your input. We still need all of that for the newcomers that are coming. Please, folks, do remember this, all right? We have a battle to win, and unless we do it right, we're not going to do it. Before I get into the show, you know, just before getting into um, the studio here, I came across an article on Slate, and that article kind of got... I mean, it, it is very disconcerting because it is almost as if people don't learn their lessons, right? The first thing that I, heard, that I read on the paper is that it says, the new, the new policy of the Democratic Party for winning the election is to go ahead and start talking about Trump's corruption and the corruption within the Trump party, between the Trump people, between the Trump organization. To which I say, first of all, we can walk and chew gum at the same time, right? But please tell me, for what Americans are going through today, why is it that we're going to spend an inordinate amount of time speaking about corruption when most Americans know that? Let me tell you something. I don't only speak to Democrats. I don't only speak to, them, to progressives. I don't only speak to uh, people on the left. I speak to everybody. And let me tell you, Americans are not stupid, okay? They know that in Trump, they have a very corrupt president that they've decided to elect. They know that. They also know that he is uh, he, he's, he's selling the, the presidency for personal gain. They know that. These are people that hate government and the bureaucracy so badly that they are okay with Trump doing this. So attempting to make or, or to, attempting to go ahead and say you're going to run on the corruption makes absolutely no sense. I mean, you must call out the corruption. You must call out that Pruitt is selling the environment. You must call out that uh, our State Department are really making policy based on what kickbacks companies are going to make. We can, we can talk about all of that. But ultimately, there's one thing we have to talk about. And that is exactly what are Democrats and progressives going to do for the average American citizen? What are you going to do? Don't tell me that Trump is corrupt because you know what? Unless you win, you can't get him out of there because it is evident, it is quite clear that the, 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 the uh, Republican Party is not going to get rid of him. Folks, you know the first thing I ask you when you get to the show. Please, if you are just coming to the show for the first time, please share this link. Please share this show on your wall. Please share this show on your page. Please share this show on Twitter, Tumblr, everywhere. Instagram, because you know what, folks? We have to be the ones that are going to win this election. It is evident that there are some other issues that the party, the party establishments are worried about. It is clearly, clearly evident that there are other issues. It is clearly that they may not even want to necessarily win if the win means a hell of a lot of progressives in there. And why may that be the case? That may actually be, there, there may some, be some rationale behind that, okay? Because the establishment of both parties are picking or pulling from the same financial pot. Folks, let's all see this. We're in this together. I don't care if you're a, 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 a somewhat that you think you're conservative. I don't know if you think you're liberal or whatever. Look, folks, we are all getting screwed at the same time by these, these two rails that are occupying the same place, the left rail and the right rail rail moving in the same direction before i get in further into the show i want to remind folks that this is a call in show the telephone number is 646-716-5812 again that number is 646-716-5812 i would love i would love to hear from all of you any of you whatever you have to say you can even change the direction of the show because this show belongs to you 
you have, this is an interactive show. You have a chance to actually be a part of it. You have a chance for us to discuss issues that may not be immediately on my agenda or on my radar or that you want to say, hey, did you know this? We want our audience in general to know this. But before I go any further, I have to make my first ask. Please do remember this is a progressive show. And one problem with progressive shows is that they don't get support. We, if we're going to get this message out, if we're going to enlighten a whole lot of people, we're going to put all of this out there. We have to make sure and ask folks, please go ahead and be a supporter. Please be a supporter. I ask thee so kindly of patreon.com slash politics and right. Patreon.com slash politics and right is how you become a member of politics and right. It's how you are a subscriber of politics and right. And you know what? I have a new thing coming out. There's going to be a surprise coming out, and it has to do with uh, you being able to see a book that is going to be re- written in real time, and every chapter that comes out, you get a chance to see it. We don't have it on the Patreon page yet, but as soon as it's there, you guys are going to be the ones who can, uh, can, can take advantage of that. Patreon.com slash politics and right. I ask thee to become subscribers. That is the only way we are going to be able to continue putting that message out, that we are going to be able to continue enlightening people, that we are going to be able to do our part in making sure... You know, uh, Trump likes to talk about make America great again. We want to make America great. We're not going to talk about make America great again. We're going to talk about make America great. Okay, folks, let's go back now to the program. So what is the title of the program today? The title of the program today is Democrats must jump on the progressive train or the party will lose 2018. And it's clearly evident based on that story from Slate that I just mentioned that they're not, they're not all that concerned about jumping on the, on the progressive chain. They're going and trying to repeat the same things over and over again. When do you learn that you can't repeat the same things over and over again and expect a different result? That is, in fact, insanity. That is insanity. So the title of the program, and I just did something and got it off my pad, so I'm going to try to reach it again. Democrats must jump on the progressive train or the party will lose in 2018. And the subtitle of the program is the DCCC is continuing its efforts to sabotage the election and we must not let them get away with it. We're got, look, in Arkansas, well, I, I'll read it. I will continue to force this subject until all the primaries are over. We must not allow the failed DCCC to continue disqualifying progressive candidate, progressives in our, in, in our primaries. This morning, I read the Think Progress article, Arkansas Democratic Par- Primary Raises Questions About Party's Future, and it was deja vu all again, folks. Deja vu all again. Why was it? Here's what the article said. Paul Spencer. Paul Spencer has known his fellow Democrat Clark Tucker for a long time. To hear him tell it, the Tucker he knew is a man of integrity, a man of values. But something changed when the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee showed up in town. That is when the DCCC showed up in town. Something happened. Clark spent $350,000 over the last couple weeks. He thought he bought a poll... He bought a poll. He got some pretty vanilla advertising. Spencer, who's running against Tucker in the Democratic primary in Arkansas, 2nd District, said in an interview with Think Progress, but that's all coming from the D.C. side of, the spin, of, the, of this. Spencer went on to say, on a personal level, the uh, Clark Tucker that I know, he's a different animal than what his campaign would project. He was against dark money. Unfortunately, unfortunately, when the DCCC comes in that's what the new paradigm is that is what the new paradigm is so what you're seeing now folks is the DCCC coming in like all these other folks and throwing money throwing money at candidates causing them to rip each other apart people of the same pri- uh, party ripping each other apart they did the same thing with phrase with, with uh, Moser and and Fletcher here in Texas uh, where they went ahead and maligned uh, the most progressive candidate, Miss uh, 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 Laura Moser. They went and uh, uh, really maligned her, and in the process of doing that, created a rift within the Democratic Party here in District 7 in Harris Co- in the, that included Harris County. That is what the DCC is doing throughout the country, creating dissension in the party, as opposed to allowing people to elect the candidate they want, in which case in this election, people are starting to go for the most progressive candidate. But, but before I get to the real program and the blog that I want to read, I want to uh, tell you about some a news item. This is a, by the Supreme Court, and this is serious. This is why you must have progressives in Congress so that we can pass a law to mitigate exactly what the Supreme Court just did today. 
Gorsuch, you remember him? You remember the guy that wasn't supposed to be there because there was supposed to be a progressive, well, a fairly progressive uh, candidate that Obama uh, put, w that put up for nomination? And of course, they let that slide and they waited for a new president to put Gorsuch in. Well, he was a deciding vote to create havoc for workers. We know that teachers right now are becoming the revolution. Teachers are starting to assert their will. Teachers are starting to bargain. Teachers are starting to do everything that is necessary to start being, to start having their worth asserted and them getting paid somewhat what they deserve. So here's what happened. The Supreme Court on Monday ruled that companies can use arbitration clauses in employment, or rather, can use arbitration clauses in employment contracts to prohibit workers from banding together to take legal action over workplace issues. The vote was five to four. With that court's move, conservative justices in a majority, the court's decision could affect some 25 million employment contracts. You hear that? Contracts. Writing for the majority, Justice Neil Gorsuch said the court's conclusion was dictated by a federal law favoring arbitration and the court's precedents. If workers were allowed to band together to press their claims, he wrote, the virtues Congress originally saw in arbitration, it speeds and simplicity and inexpensiveness would be shorn away and arbitration would wind up looking like the litigation it was meant to displace. However, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, our liberal stallion, read her dissent from the, beach, from the bench as a sign of profound disagreement. In her written dissent, she called the majority opinion egregiously wrong. In her oral statement, she said the upshot of the decision will be huge under enforcement of federal and state statutes I designed to advance the well-being of vulnerable workers. Justice Ginsburg called on Congress to address the matter. Brian T. Fitzpatrick, a law professor at Vanderbilt University who studies arbitration and class actions, said the ruling was unsurprising in light of earlier Supreme Court, uh, uh, Supreme Court uh, decisions. Justice Gorsuch added, appears to have put his cards on the table as firmly in favor of allowing class actions to be stamped out through arbitration agreements. Think about that. As a result, Professor Fitzpatrick said it is only a matter of time until the most powerful device to hold corporations accountable for their misdeeds are lost altogether. I don't know, folks, if you understand the severity of that from teachers all the way back. This is, this is a huge blow to the labor movement. And it is something, one of the reasons why it is essential, why it is of utmost, uh, utmost importance that what we get elected in November are progressives, people that are going to go to the polls and reverse what the Supreme Court has, has upheld in that suit. Very, 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 very important. And you know what, folks? We can do it. Anyhow, the blog of the week uh, is actually the Sunday front page at Daily Coast that I wrote got quite a bit of response at Daily Coast. And the reason I want to read that is, you know, there are some responses in there that really gave me pause. They really gave me pause. But what I want to do first is go ahead and start with the blog of the week. So you guys, I think you know what time it is. It's time for the weekly blog post. Okay. Weekly blog post. Title of the weekly blog post is No Need for Democrats to Fear Their Progressive Wing. Join it instead. No need to fear it. What you need to do is to join it. And here we go. Last Tuesday's primary elections were a near-perfect day for progressives. They won races in Pennsylvania, Nebraska, Idaho, and Oregon. Should this outcome, should this outcome Worry rank and file Democrats? The answer is a categorical no, and here is why. In as much as they are fearful because, because uh, liberals, because real progressives are winning. The progressive wing is living up to the spirit of the Democratic platform. Tempering candidates, progressives' views is not only hypocritical, or let me repeat that, tempering candidates' progressive views is not only hypocritical, it also reveals that there is no intent to live up to the party's stated tenets. In other words, if you hear a Democrat talking about, oh, he's too progressive to run, then they forget 
what the tenets of the, D the Democratic Party says, but more importantly, as you'll hear, it's much deeper than that. When one reads the following in the Washington Post, it's not difficult to understand why many get upset at those who believe they are ordained to determine the choice of candidates for Democrats. And how did the Post characterize Tuesday's good news? They titled their piece. Here's this title, folks. The far left is winning the Democratic Civil War. Or worse, the subtitle is Tuesday was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day for Democratic moderates. And then the preamble to the article said the following. The success of very liberal candidates in primaries across four states is causing a new bout of heartburn among party strategists in Washington who worry about unelectable activists thwarting their drive for the White House majority. But it also reflects a broader left lurch among Democrats across the country since President Trump took office. No, absolutely false. There is no leftward movement for Democrats. The party moved so right what the Democratic uh, the LC has done. That is what moved the party that makes those people who are really pretty left of center seem like, oh, they're left wingers. That's not the case, folks. But this is important. Keep listening. This is important. Very important. Let's be clear. Progressives are definitely not far left. Bill Clinton's Democratic Leadership Council, the DLC, moved the Democratic Party to the right. The fallacy has always been, and folks, I need you to understand this, so that anybody who starts telling you, if we don't go to the right or if we don't go to the center right, we are going to lose. Look, I want to warn you, folks. I want to tell you. Republicans aren't stupid. Republican voters aren't stupid. If they want... If they want a Republican candidate, they won't pick a, a Democratic light or Republican light con con uh, representative, in all otherwise known as a blue dog or whatever. They will go for the real thing. They will go for the real thing. For those who are just coming on, if you're just coming on, please go ahead and share on your Facebook page, Facebook wall, Twitter, Tumblr, everywhere. We need to get this message out. We so do need to get this message out. So I'll repeat that part of the paragraph. It goes as follows. Let's be clear. Let's be very darn clear. Progressives are definitely not far left. Bill Clinton's Democratic Leadership Council, the DLC, moved the Democratic Party where? To the right. The fallacy has always been that said rightward move gave us the Bill Clinton presidency. The reality is that President Bill Clinton, the rightward Democrat, never got, listen to this, never got 50% of the vote in either of his elections. President Clinton, moving the party to the right, not once got over, not, he never even made it to 50%. Let's continue, though. Let's continue. During the Obama campaign, smack in the middle of white working class America, a canvasser asked a white family who they were voting for in the election. The wife asked her husband, Strange, I know. Why would the wife have to ask the husband? But she asked her husband, and she shouted, Honey, who are we voting for? The, <laughs> I won't say the word. We're voting for the N-word. This is telling. This is telling. These people were at the point where they were voting based strictly on their personal economies. It superseded their racism just like fear breeds camaraderie in a foxhole. If you're in a foxhole, I don't care who you are, and the bullets are flying over you, that guy or that gal in that foxhole with you, you love them to death. That's your protection. That's going to keep you alive. You've just formed a bond, a bond of necessity, not necessarily a bond of culture or race or creed or whatever. And do remember what I preach on this show all the time. Race is nothing but a social structure. So don't ever, ever, ever be fooled by it and believe it really matters. It only matters in our reality, which have been used to screw a lot of people. But let's continue. President Obama sent out his army in 2007. I joined that army after I abandoned the Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton campaign in February of 20, 2008. It was methodical, decidedly progressive, and relatable. Before it went into its micro-targeting mode, it used a broadcast method to soften up the entire field. 
it attracted voters in my very white conservative suburb that managed to shock me. Look, I live in a very conservative town, very conservative suburb, very white suburb. And I remember going to these meetings for the Obama campaign and going into these areas where kids were going to school painted with the Obama sign on their face. Little young white kids were going to elementary school with the Obama sign on their faces. These were Republicans. I went to Republican homes where the parent or the person that held the household would say, I am not, I'm a Republican, but I am supporting this guy. And, you know, I would be curious and also scared because I knew this passion couldn't keep up. And by God, Tea Party showed that it couldn't keep up. But I would ask, how comes? My son went to San Marcos University in, uh, here in Texas or the University of Texas or the University of Virginia or some university. And Obama had went and he planted his books there. And he got, he spoke to people. He spoke to their hearts. He went ahead, was decidedly progressive and spoke to their needs. Yes, he didn't govern as progressives as he campaigned, but he spoke to their needs. He spoke to what they needed to hear. And it was a message that was neither Republican or Democratic. It was middle class. It was middle class. So, it, w it attracted voters in my very white conservative suburb that managed to shock me. It shocked me to the core. Now, Assuming that candidates who are in tune with the wants and the needs of three-fifths of Americans, they are electable is not only... It's thinking that they are not electable is not only wrong. It is lazy. What I mean by that, folks, is this. And I'm on, actually, I'll address what I mean by that when I talk about what some of the comments were for this article on the front page of Daily Coast. But I want to repeat that sentence because it is, it is the core of importance of something that we need to talk about. Assuming that candidates who are in tune with the wants and needs of three-fifths of Americans are unelectable is not only wrong, it is lazy. That is the problem with our politics today. Too many ivory tower, supposedly liberal pundits, and distor are distorting or articulating false narratives that tend to stick. As I mentioned in my article, a warning to the Democratic Party, you cannot win like this. That was the title of the article. The American people are already with us. You don't have to go out there and say, I'm a progressive or I'm doing this this way. The American people are already with us. Here's the deal. At least three-fifths of Americans support the following. A federally funded healthcare system that provides everyone with insurance. Unions should have the same or more influence than they have now. Limits on campaign spending. Support for renewable energy and climate change. Reproductive rights of women. LGBT rights. Higher minimum wage. Legalized marijuana. Free child care. A path to citizenship for undocumented immigrants. Folks, more than three-fifths of Americans or at least three-fifths of Americans supports that. Support that. Why are we not out there preaching to the larger choir? Why are we thinking that we have to cater to folks, the majority of folks where people aren't? We don't. What we are is are lazy. Because when we come out with these points, what happens then is the Republicans and the right wing and the, pro and the conservatives come out with ads attacking, oh, big spender, big taxer. And as opposed to refuting those items with fact-based data showing that even if there are higher taxes that goes to the top, even if uh, it costs more, it will ultimately cost you less. As opposed to making the effort, as opposed to putting in the work to counteract what comes from the right, we throw in the towel and say, Oh, well, you know what the right's going to say. So, so, there is no need for rank and file Democrats to fear that the progressive wing of the Democratic Party will kill the blue wave. In fact, the opposite is true. The excitement, the excitement is in the belief that we just may 
be at the point where real progressive policies can be realized after the current shift to policies that represent a clear and present danger to the personal economies of most Americans. Just like NASA uses the gravitational field of other celestial bodies to slingshot probes in different directions and use its propulsion resources effectively, we, progressives, Democrats, must use the attacks from the right and anyone else to accentuate progressive positions and values. Those who oppose us will get all the media platform they want in an attempt at marginalization. But... At times, at times, at times, at times, they will bring us to their appearances with the expectation to either put us on the defensive or to ridicule us. But as I explain in another post title, the five issues Democrats and progressives must push to win the 2018 midterms, we must have a simple message at the tip of our tongues ready, always ready always ready to tell constituents what Democrats will do for them. And here they are. Numero uno, Democrats will fix the health care issue once and for all with a single-payer Medicare for all system. D number, numero dos, Democrats will provide student loan relief. Numero tres, Democrats will provide need-based subsidized child care for anyone who wants to work. Numero cuatro, Democrats will decriminalize marijuana and treat drug use as the disease that it is. And numero cinco, Democrats will make the criminal justice system live up to the justice is blind motto. Now, people will say, but you know, that'll be attacked. Yes, it will. But you will be ready. Those five bullet points expressed in different terms will work in every district in America. It appeals to millennials, people of color, all working class people, parents, and every demographic in between. Most importantly, those bullet points afford Americans a path to self-sufficiency. It frees them from aberrations in the economy that stunts innovation, the inability to start one's business, and the dependency and the enslavement to the corporation. Those five points. I know, I know, other folks are going to say, what about the environment? What about abortion? What about all these things? For all those progressives that already support those five points, guess what? You can be almost guaranteed they already support every progressive value. What we've done by isolating those issues is these issues will work in every community, no matter ideology, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, or for the, for the most part, at least three-fifths of the people. We know that. And we don't bring in for big dispute these items that they're going to try to isolate us on. They'll try to say, let's start talking about abortion, but forget about your personal economy. No, no, no. We're not going to play your game. We are going to direct the game. We are the ones that are going to say, we are out there looking out for you. We're not going to let them dictate that. We are going to dictate the policies. We are going to dictate what's going to be good or what, what America told us they want, and we are going to tell them we're going to give it to you. We're not going to allow anybody else to put in an ancillary items to, de to deny you that which you deserve. Anyhow, every appearance in the media, every single appearance in the media should segue to these points. So, I mean, if, if they brought you on to talk about what the Democrats are claiming they're going to talk about now. Oh, let's talk about corruption. Oh, let's talk about Russia. Oh, let's talk about St St uh, Stormy Daniels and all of that. Go on the show. If they want you to talk about all these other issues, go on the show, my dear progressives. But as soon as you, if, you're, if you know you're going to be talking for one minute, answer their question in 10 seconds and immediately segue to the five points and use that air time wisely. Use that broadcast time wisely. Tell Americans this, however, Trump is doing all these bad things. His administration is decimating government. He's destroying the country. And we are going to make it whole again. And this is how. These are the things that we are going to do for you. These are the things that you told us that you want. And this is what we're going to do. 
That is what progressives have to do. They have to be proactive. They cannot be playing on the defensive game. They cannot be saying, well, we have to answer what the Republicans are asking. No, you don't. You push the message. What are you going to do for people? What are you going to do for the middle class? And use every avenue, social media. Use every time you are on broadcast news, irrespective of what they ask, you tell what you must say. You know who are great, who's great in doing that? Republicans. That's what they do. And you know what it has done for them? They win. Every appearance in the media should segue to these points. It must be ubiquitous. Some will argue that we should include all other major topics that we as progressives support, the environment, racial justice, women's right to choose, and dozens of others. But the reality is that most people support most of these issues by majorities or pluralities. We need a simple message that appeals quickly, cannot be easily demagogued, and can broaden a base. Politicians who support the five issues, politicians who support the five issues listed in bold above are all in with most of the progressive agenda. Hermanos míos, eso es lo que tenemos que hacer. That's what we've got to do. If we want to win, don't play the game of the DCCC. They're destroying the party. Play your game. Play the progressive game. Support real progressives. Go out, here in Texas, go out tomorrow and vote progressive. I tell you what, if you want to know who not to support in their uh, primaries here in Texas... Check out who the DCCC is supporting and make sure not to support that person. Take the power away from the externality. Make sure that you are the one in command, not for these guys to come. You see what they just did in Arkansas. You see what they did to good brother uh, uh, Levi Tilleman in, in, in Arizona. We can't have that. We can't have these people coming in and telling us what's best for the party. They don't know that. What's best for our district? We know what will win in our districts. We know that. What they want to do, and I'll read the last paragraph of the, uh, of the, of the uh, blog of the week in a little bit, but let me tell you what the DCCC really wants to do. They want to get candidates sufficiently blue dog so that they supposedly don't dry up their monies from their corporate interests, okay? That's the truth, sir. That is the truth, ma'am. That is what they want to do. This is not really about, oh, who's more electable. This is how, this is about who is more electable and purchasable by the corporate state. That is what it's all about. What I'm begging you, Send a message. If you're in Arizona, send a message. Levi, if you're in, if, if you're in, uh, in Arkansas, I don't remember the name of the, uh, of the person right now in Arkansas, but if in, you're in Arkansas, do remember who to vote for. I think his name is Spencer. If you're in, 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 in DCO7, since I'm in Texas, I don't want to do this, but just remember, you always choose the one that the DCC was not for. And why? Because you must take away the power that they think they have. They are not in it for middle class America, period. Punto final. They are not. I'm coming to the call in one second. Uh, so please hold there with me. I will be coming to you. Just let me finish. Read the last paragraph, caller. Here we go. Uh, last paragraph, and I kind of lost it, so let me get to it. Here we go. Last paragraph goes as follows. Para ver, para ver, para ver, para ver. Vámonos, hombre. Okay. Uh, let's see. I got to get to the last paragraph because that's where we make our end in. Here we go. Democrats must be prepared and be aggressive. You hear what I'm saying? Democrats, you must be prepared. You must be aggressive. I, ha I see candidates out there today that I just love. These guys are not pulling any punches. They're doing what has to be done. Uh, we must dialogue from a position of strength because you know what? And use our sound economic stance and the intrinsic morality of our positions to put all who oppose the progressive tenets Americans say they want on the defensive. We are going to put them on the defensive because America say they want what we are offering. Open the windows so America can see exactly who opposes progressivism. Be loud about it. Let them know who are the people that are really opposing progressivism and why. Then even the wards of the plutocracy, guardians of the mansion, or guardians of the mansion gate, will no longer be able to enter. It's funny. They're guarding a, they're guarding a mansion they can't even partake of. Anyhow, 
let's go ahead and bring our caller in line numero let's see you're 917 come on in my friend talk to me caller you're on okay uh i don't hear you caller you're on okay let's see what's going on here you are not coming in caller all right let's let's try that again can you hear me okay let's see if uh i don't know why you can't hear but i guess he'll try to call back later anyhow folks look it is simple it is very simple uh progressives have got to go out there and do the work most importantly progressives cannot fall for the crap progressives cannot fall for the crap what i'm going to do now is uh before i go any further i'm going to take this little time here to go back to uh to our ask this is the middle of the show actually and i'd like to remind folks that this is a progressive show not only is this a progressive show this is a show that needs your support i don't ask you to do anything that i don't do myself uh please do remember okay i get it better get out of there and go ahead and see if i can get the caller in uh, let's see if the caller can come in. Caller, can you hear us at all, caller? Uh, maybe, or could you be on mute, caller? Okay, for some reason, our caller is not coming in. Let me go ahead and check some uh, statuses here, just in case. Uh, let's see, no, that is, he's on the right codec. All right, uh, all right, caller, for some reason, I can't hear you, but uh, let me... Uh, let me go ahead and requeue this uh, this thing. In, in the meantime, what I'll do is uh, I'll go ahead and go to the board. Stay with me, caller. I'll I'll try to come back to you in a second. Let's go ahead and see what we're what folks are saying on Facebook Live. But before that, I want to go ahead and make my ask again. Like I tell all, all all the folks that are listening to the show, this is a decidedly progressive show. Not only is this a decidedly progressive show, but what we do here is we uh, we go ahead and we interview progressive candidates throughout the country, candidates that don't normally get airtime. We've also brought progressive uh, journalists uh, like uh, uh, Crystal Ball and others uh, and professors who've actually uh, defined what evangelism is and how it is affecting our system. We do a whole, whole lot of work. We also went to things like the, the, the Women's March in, in D.C. And, and, and the Gun March in D.C. and several other things. So what we do here is we bring uh, the message, but not the message through the filters of the corporatocracy, meaning the mainstream media. We bring it to you the way that it needs to be brought to you unadulteratedly in a form progressive, which is the form that is. So I don't ask you to do what I don't do. I ask you to subscribe to our program. Uh, go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash politics and right. That is Patreon.com slash politics and right. I don't just uh, ask this. We do the same ourselves. We go ahead and we support the dailycoast.com, opednews.com, the Democratic Underground, or rather, democraticunderground.com. And likewise, we support uh, the, the Coffee Party USA.com, Coffee Party USA.com, that is, and uh, several of the Democratic, uh, other Democratic institu institutions. So we ask that you do the same. Now, one of the issues that we have in this country is that the, the, the right has a whole lot of support. They have the Koch brothers and big corporations that are continuously given to them. And the reason they do that is because their will is, get, is executed. Now, if we want to do the same, one of the things that we really want to do is we want to ensure that our sources of information to enlighten our people, to encourage our people to go out and vote is also funded. And the thing about it is we don't require a lot because as you can see even here with Politics Done Right, we have three mixers, uh, three computers, a few uh, other items here uh, to run this, including a few cameras. And we do things on the cheap, very frugally. And when we travel, we have several of these. That's generally our broadcast cameras and we have a couple of HDs that we, we use for all our videos. So we, we, we do good work with very little, and what we ask is that uh, you help us with that. So please go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash politics done right. Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash politics done right. We do this because we have to. We do this because we think we are compelled to do it. And why are we compelled to do this? Because, folks, if we don't, they win. If we don't, they win. What I need to do right here again is for us to go ahead and uh, what what I'm going to try to do is requeue our 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 calls. I think I can. We'll go ahead and try that and see see if that that works so that we can get our candidate in. You know, sometimes it, 
Sometimes it happens, sometimes it don't. Every so often, when you're working with these um, these internet studios, what would happen is that they will have a glitch at the center itself that creates a problem. We don't know if that's what happened, but we'll, we'll see. Now, let me go ahead and get to my people, to the great folk, you wonderful people on Facebook. I'm heading for you now. Let's see. All right, we're going to bring you up here. Come on, folks, come on. Let's see if I... You know what? I've been I've had this uh, this little stand here for for ages, and for some reason I don't use it. I don't know why. Let's go ahead and 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 start bringing it. As soon as it loads up, we'll we'll go ahead and. Uh, okay, looks like you're loaded now. Okay, let's start with. Well, I need a little bit more. Uh, I guess I need to go ahead and say hi to all you folks that have recently joined in. Okay, it's it. It'll be coming up. In due time, my dear friends, it'll be coming up in due time. As you can see, I'm stalling for time. As I stall for time, I will go ahead. Okay, Michael. Oh, I love my regulars. We have here William Bill McCloy, who is going. Not, he's not even in the runoff. He's going solid to win in November. Welcome aboard, William Bill McCloy. William is running for judge. I don't recall of quite um, what bench he's running for, but I tell you one thing. Any Democrat who needs to learn or want to know how to run for, in an election, you contact William Bill McCloy because let me tell you something. This guy is everywhere and he leaves absolutely no stone under turn, uh, on turn over whatever that word is. And he goes into every single community, make himself known, telling folks, I am going to be here to serve you. I'm going to be here to give you justice. William Bill McCloyd and I don't know I, I imagine he has fundraisers look like I mentioned when I was requesting that you guys uh, subscribe to um, like I mentioned when you guys subscribe to um, asking you to subscribe to Politics Done Right we have to support our own we need to support our own we have to make sure folks that we can get the message out we have to make sure that our candidates are funded so folks please uh, support uh, Politics Done Right uh, you just have to go patreon.com slash politics and right. Support Bill McCloyd and other folks here. His next fundraiser is June 28th. Go to uh, Nick to Bill McCloyd. But you don't have to wait till his next fundraiser. Just go to his website and 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 uh, give some 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 info. Uh, Bill McCloyd, if you're in the room, go ahead and throw in your uh, website in there and uh, so that folks can um, see who you are and support the progressives man we need to have your support and again support politics and right because we are putting a whole lot of these guys on air to make sure that we can actually win michael rudden arkansas georgia kentucky and texas have democratic primaries tomorrow yes we have one and we want to make sure that the most progressive person win that is my state by the way mr michael rudden in uh, finally found a good site for info on those elections if you're uh thank you for that and he has it in there um he, he went ahead and put it and by the way bill mccloy just went ahead and put his website in there please go check it out help him out make sure that we 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 notice i said we win this darn election and this is not only about locally here in texas this is national this show is listened to all over the entire country in fact we get contributions from all over the country because we do our part but we are so behind we need to get up to hundreds of very small subscribers very small a coffee give politics and right a coffee all right let's see let's continue mr rudnin maybe i should still call in focus on the topic <laughs> look uh, we have to focus on the topic. You're absolutely right. And you can call in and change the topic. It's so far that uh, it seems like we're having some telephone problems. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Rene Perpetua. Egberto, you need to run. I can't run. Love your platform. I appreciate that, Rene Perpetua. Uh, that's it, Michael, for pushing the boulder. Okay, let's continue. Uh, the Tea Party was a well-oiled machine. You're absolutely right. And you know what? Progressives now, the, what we now call the resistance is a well-oiled machine, and you guys are doing very well. The difference between these machines is we are not funded. So help fund this well-oiled machine. Matthew Tyneman, agreed with both of you. I wasn't even where I am now politically then, but it was underwhelming. Now all his fault, obviously. Okay, Michael Rudnan again. Such great promise for a new politician who stood with the people, and I'll fail for uh, and rather and and i'll fall for it again willingly if another progressive candidate comes up the promise that government can work 
for people is enough we the people look government can work what we did with obama folks and i don't want you cannot blame obama 100 percent. what happened with president obama is that we the progressive base specifically the progressive activists gave him a break that he didn't necessarily want he won't, would not have come out and said, please, guys, don't give me a break. He would have wanted you to continue to challenge the Democrats. We didn't. I'll be frank. As Senor Obama being the first president of color, the first black president, I was very hesitant to join up and be attacking him from the left while the right was really crucifying him. I thought it was not the right thing to do. In hindsight... I think, personally, I was wrong. I think he would have liked us to push the Democrats. He wouldn't, they wouldn't say it, but he would have liked to see a substantial base pushing them to do what needed to be done. More than likely, we would have had the public option if we had done that. So I'm with you uh, uh, on what you're saying in, in the most part. Okay, René Perpetua, but when Obama got in, he capitulated. Yes, and, and again, I, like I, I put a lot of that fault on all of us for not, um, for not really being as hard on him as we probably should and likely something he may have wanted as well. Okay, uh, Michael D. Newton. Hello, welcome aboard. I don't think I've seen you here before. Michael Rudnan also said, why are the Democratic primary elections that might hold a fate of the nation getting so little press? Well, you know why? Because we're in the corporate media. They want... Look, here's what they're doing. The DCCC is going around the country selecting candidates. They are wanting to have low turnout elections so that the Democratic base... the demo, I should... Let me rephrase that. So that the Democratic establishment base would vote but that the democratic progressives would stay home or would not be all that interested. That's a goal. It is clearly the goal. It's what we have to watch. And that's why I'm telling all my voters out there today, all our great progressive voters out there today, tomorrow, as uh, Senor Rudnin said, we have a whole lot of elections in Arkansas, in, in, in Texas, and other places. Go out to vote progressive. You're needed more than ever and bring in that progressive candidate. We will worry about making him electable in his district. Deny, deny the DCCC. Deny the DCCC completely their ability to fail us one more time. Because if you want to know the results of how good they are, let's look at all the state senates the state congresses, and all these others that we've lost. Over a thousand candidates since the reign of President Obama. Over a thousand candidates. That doesn't breed confidence. That doesn't breed that, yeah, let's go ahead and follow these guys. Why would we follow them? They've always lost for us. Let's win for ourselves. Let's go out there. Let's do what William Bill McCloyd is doing. He's hitting every community. He's not following the guidelines that says, oh, um, uh, Let's just get the base out to vote. We get the base out, we can... No, no, no. Obama didn't do that. Obama was like that ship in the middle of the bay, softening up the flank, bombing, softening up the flank, so that when he went in, he was able to clean up. And that he did. Let's not get history reinvented. Clinton and the DLC didn't save the Democratic Party. What they did is they extended voodoo economics. President Obama ran on changing the Democratic Party. He did to some extent, but for the most part, he failed. And that is because of the inertia. That is because of the gravity of the institution proper. And it's going to take it's going to take the resistance of the progressives to change that. And you know what, great progressives? I'm here in the Houston area and I watch these progressive, these millennials, these young Gen Xers, I watch them in awe. 
as these guys are doing the necessary work. Brothers and sisters, keep up doing the good work because that is what it's going to take. Continuing my reading, um, let's see. I don't see the Democrats jumping on anything but more lobbyists and the chance to continue the status quo. And that's why, that's why, my dear friends, that is why we need those Democratic progressives moving on to the flank. And that's why we don't need to have the guy in Arizona who was a lawyer for the payday loans. That is who the DCCC is supporting in Arizona over a true progressive Democrat who believes in Medicare for all. They're supporting the, the guy who's supporting the loan sharks. Does that tell you something? What does that tell you? You know, a lot of Democrats is like, Egberto, why are you hurting the party? I'm not doing a darn thing like that. I'm telling, I am trying to save the party. Not I. We are trying to save the party. I can't do diddly squat. Nothing. Yo no puedo hacer nada. Ni además soy un hombre que está tratando de hacerlo. Nada. Nothing. I can't do it. We have to do it. We have to do it, my dear folks. Anyhow, let me continue with reading... Uh, the article in question, thank you for uh, pointing out the article. Gloria Dawson Harris, welcome aboard. I hadn't seen you before. Likewise, uh, Donald Carrie Shaw, welcome aboard. Denise Skeeter, resist. Vote and push the Dems to progressive agenda. We must keep the account we must keep them accountable to all of us. Viva Denise Skeeter. Again, viva Denise Skeeter. In Panama, so we always say, Viva la patria! Viva los Estados Unidos! Viva Denise Skeeter! Okay, Truth Dig, that is from Michael... You know, I love Michael Rudnick. He's always giving us all this new information that he... As the program goes, he wants to keep the program on... You know, uh, I guess he wants to make sure that um, all these issues are in the forefront. And for the people who come to the program later on on the podcast, they can see a lot of Michael Rudnick's work. Very good work, Rudnick. Here we go. We go again with the big money corruption. Clark spent three hundred and fifty thousand dollars over the last two weeks. So, so definitely true. All right, Rene Perpetua, notorious in our liberal might. Let me go ahead and do a refresh here to make sure I get all the people. All right, uh, bear with me now. Bear with me. Uh, I think I just saw a new message from Mr. McLeod, so I want to read that out. Okay. Uh, this is from William B. Uh, Lawrence Sims. Welcome aboard, my dear brother. Uh, William D. McLeod says, uh, DCC, please sit down and let us move forward, united together. Absolutely so. Uh, Bill McLeod also says, uh, so we need to vote and move forward. Get out of the way and let's move Harris County forward with progressive solutions. He knows what he's speaking about. He's living it. He's running it. He's talking to the people. He's talking to the folks on the ground. They know what they're going to vote for. They know what, if they don't get the right folks, what they will not, what they will not vote for. Again, Bill McClure, corporate media kills high turnout from progressive voters. Absolutely so. And that's why we need independent media, Bill. That's why we have to promote independent media who will go out there and promote the Bill McCloyds, William Bill McCloyds of the world, the, uh, the, Levi, uh, the, the Levi Tillerson, the uh, Laura Mosier, and all these, these uh, liberal progressive candidates that are running that the DCCC don't want to see. Guess what, folks? We are there. And I tell you what, those of you watching this stuff live, thank you very much. We're going to have several other thousands on podcasts and vlogcast. And you know what? We need it all. First of all, we need you to support us. We need you to support us. Patreon.com slash politics done right. We need several hundred to keep this stuff alive. But we also need you to go ahead and support the Bill McCloyds of the world. Rene Perpetua, small point but important. RBG is not a stallion. <laughs> you know something? I am so bad. When I try to make some of those analogies, uh, Rene, I mean, I am so bad. Uh, at least this time I didn't get completely in trouble because what I was trying to do is denote how strong she was, right? But man, I've, I've done some screw up sometimes when I try to make these analogies. Sometimes I say, oh, don't do it. But you know how it is. You start getting excited and every now and then one of these things run out of your mouth. But you know what, Rene? 
Muchísimas gracias for keeping me on my toes. That's why I have you guys to make sure that I stay on my toes. Let's see if we have any more issues here from folks that they want to discuss. Uh, which ones did I miss? Which one did I miss? Bear with me. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay. Uh, Bill McLeod, I'm going to schedule a share of your site link tomorrow afternoon. Thank you so very much, uh, uh, Michael Rudnan. We need you to do that for, uh, for William Bill McLeod and all the others. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Something wrong with my phone on or the call in board. I think it is the call in board. Um, I think uh, Blog Talk Radio is having problems today. That is not on our side, I promise you. We do this all the time. So I think that is where the problem is. Uh, okay, now we're coming close to the end of the show. So what I want to tell you guys is as follows. Tomorrow is election day. Almost all these different Tuesdays are election day in some state. Progressives, you're listening to me right now. We need you to go out there and vote. I don't care what you're doing. Take your kid with you. If you're uh, and and feminists, I don't know if you're gonna if I'm I'm wrong or right here, but I'll try it anyway. If you have to go in there and breastfeed and they give you trouble, you let us know, because we will make sure that folks know that hey, the world has changed. But you gotta go vote. No excuses, progressives. You've got to go vote. And you have to vote the progressive candidate. And also remember, for all practical purposes, if the DC, DCCC is supporting the candidate, it is likely not the candidate for you to vote for, with one exception. If the candidate that they picked was the right choice, meaning it wasn't some sort of a uh, non-progressive type person. So folks, it's so important for you to go out there and vote. Now, last call. Folks, please go ahead and go to patreon.com slash politics and right. Again, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash politics and rights support our show remember we do the same thing with several other shows several other websites because we know we know we cannot we will not move forward unless we ensure that all all progressive sources all progressive candidates all progressive uh independent uh independent media everything they all must be supported if we are to win. Because you know what? A lot of people that's on their cell phone, they go ahead and they scroll down to stories, they scroll down to podcasts, they have no idea what's happening on the news. We get to penetrate them on an iPhone, on a, on a droid. We get to do that because our videos, our audios are all over. Our website or made not only for the telephone, but for all different platforms, so we can get it out there. We can get where the mainstream media isn't getting these particular people, but we need your support to keep this going. So please go ahead and support Politics Done Right. Give us a coffee or so, patreon.com slash politics done right. Look, my name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right, a very progressive show trying to move progressive values and give progressive candidates a hearing you know what time it is to just tell you that we guess what we are out <laughs>